Chapter 13 Now when Simon heard that Tryphon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it, and saw that the people was in great trembling and fear, he went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together, and gave them exhortation, saying, Ye yourselves know what great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws and the sanctuary, the battles also and troubles which we have seen, by reason whereof all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, and I am left alone. Now therefore be it far from me that I should spare mine own life in any time of trouble, for I am no better than my brethren. Doubtless I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our wives and our children, for all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. Now as soon as the people heard these words, their spirit revived. And they answered with a loud voice, saying, Thou shalt be our leader instead of Judas and Jonathan thy brother. Fight thou our battles, and whatsoever thou commandest us, that will we do. So then he gathered together all the men of war, and made haste to finish the walls of Jerusalem, and he fortified it round about. Also he sent Jonathan the son of Absalom, and with him a great power, to Joppa, who casting out them that were therein remained there in it. So Tryphon removed from Ptolemaeus with a great power to invade the land of Judea, and Jonathan was with him in ward. But Simon pitched his tents at Adida, over against the plain. Now when Tryphon knew that Simon was risen up instead of his brother Jonathan, and meant to join battle with him, he sent messengers unto him, saying, Whereas we have Jonathan thy brother in hold, it is for money that he is owing unto the king's treasure, concerning the business that was committed unto him. Wherefore now send an hundred talents of silver, and two of his sons for hostages, that when he is at liberty, he may not revolt from us, and we will let him go. Hereupon Simon, albeit he perceived that they spake deceitfully unto him, yet sent he the money and the children, lest peradventure he should procure to himself great hatred of the people. Who might have said, Because I sent him not the money and the children, therefore is Jonathan dead? So he sent them the children and the hundred talents, howbeit Tryphon dissembled neither would he let Jonathan go. And after this came Tryphon to invade the land, and destroy it, going round about by the way that leadeth unto Adora. But Simon and his host marched against him in every place, wheresoever he went. Now they that were in the tower sent messengers unto Tryphon, to the end that he should hasten his coming unto them by the wilderness, and send them victuals. Wherefore Tryphon made ready all his horsemen to come that night, but there fell a very great snow, by reason whereof he came not. So he departed, and came into the country of Galad. And when he came near to Bascama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. Afterward Tryphon returned, and went into his own land. Then sent Simon, and took the bones of Jonathan his brother, and buried them in Modan, the city of his fathers. And all Israel made great lamentation for him, and bewailed him many days. Simon also built a monument upon the sepulchre of his father and his brethren, and raised it aloft to the site, with hewn stone behind and before. Moreover he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father, and his mother, and his four brethren. And in these he made cunning devices, about the which he set great pillars, and upon the pillars he made all their armor for a perpetual memory, and by the armor ships carved, that they might be seen of all that sail on the sea. This is the sepulcher which he made at Modan, and it standeth yet unto this day. Now Tryphon dealt deceitfully with the young king Antiochus, and slew him. And he reigned in his stead, and crowned himself king of Asia, and brought a great calamity upon the land. Then Simon built up the strongholds in Judea, 
and fence them about with high towers, and great walls, and gates, and bars, and laid up victuals therein. Moreover, Simon chose men and sent to King Demetrius, to the end he should give the land an immunity, because all that Tryphon did was to spoil. Unto whom King Demetrius answered and wrote after this manner, King Demetrius unto Simon the high priest, and friend of kings, as also unto the elders and nation of the Jews, sendeth greeting. The golden crown and the scarlet robe which ye sent unto us, we have received, and we are ready to make a steadfast peace with you, yea, and to write unto our officers, to confirm the immunities which we have granted. And whatsoever covenants we have made with you shall stand, and the strongholds which ye have builded shall be your own. As for any oversight or fault committed unto this day, we forgive it, and the crown tax also, which ye owe us, and if there were any other tribute paid in Jerusalem, it shall no more be paid. And look who are meet among you to be in our court. Let then be enrolled, and let there be peace betwixt us. Thus the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Israel in the hundred and seventieth year. Then the people of Israel began to write in their instruments and contracts in the first year of Simon the high priest, the governor and leader of the Jews. In those days Simon camped against Gaza and besieged it round about. He made also an engine of war, and set it by the city, and battered a certain tower, and took it. And they that were in the engine leaped into the city, whereupon there was a great uproar in the city. Insomuch as the people of the city rent their clothes, and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children, and cried with a loud voice, beseeching Simon to grant them peace. And they said, Deal not with us according to our wickedness, but according to thy mercy. So Simon was appeased toward them, and fought no more against them, but put them out of the city, and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were, and so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. Yea, he put all uncleanness out of it, and placed such men there as would keep the law, and made it stronger than it was before, and built therein a dwelling place for himself. They also of the tower in Jerusalem were kept so straight that they could neither come forth, nor go into the country, nor buy nor sell, wherefore they were in great distress for want of victuals, and a great number of them perished through famine. Then cried they to Simon, beseeching him to be at one with them, which thing he granted them. And when he had put them out from thence, he cleansed the tower from pollutions, and entered into it the three and twentieth day of the second month in the hundred seventy and first year with thanksgiving and branches of palm trees, and with harps and cymbals and with vials and hymns and songs, because there was destroyed a great enemy out of Israel. He ordained also that that day should be kept every year with gladness. Moreover, the hill of the temple that was by the tower he made stronger than it was, and there he dwelt himself with his company. And when Simon saw that John his son was a valiant man, he made him captain of all the hosts, and he dwelt in Gezerah. Chapter 14 now in the hundred threescore and twelfth year, King Demetrius gathered his forces together and went into Media to get him help to fight against Tryphon. But when Arsaces, the king of Persia and Media, heard that Demetrius was entered within his borders, he sent one of his princes to take him alive, who went and smote the host of Demetrius and took him and brought him to Arsaces, by whom he was put in ward. As for the land of Judea, that was quiet all the days of Simon, for he sought the good of his nation in such wise as that evermore his authority and honor pleased them well. And as he was honorable in all his acts, so in this, that he took Joppa for an haven and made an entrance to the isles of the sea, and enlarged the bounds of his nation and recovered the country, and gathered together a great number of captives 
and had the dominion of Gazera, and Bethsura, and the tower, out of the which he took all uncleanness. Neither was there any that resisted him. Then did they till their ground in peace, and the earth gave her increase, and the trees of the field their fruit. The ancient men sat all in the streets, communing together of good things, and the young men put on glorious and warlike apparel. He provided victuals for the cities, and set in them all manner of munition, so that his honorable name was renowned unto the end of the world. He made peace in the land, and Israel rejoiced with great joy. For every man sat under his vine and his fig tree, and there was none to fray them. Neither was there any left in the land to fight against them. Yea, the kings themselves were overthrown in those days. Moreover, he strengthened all those of his people that were brought low. The law he searched out, and every contemner of the law and wicked person he took away. He beautified the sanctuary and multiplied vessels of the temple. Now, when it was heard at Rome, and as far as Sparta, that Jonathan was dead, they were very sorry. But as soon as they heard that his brother Simon was made high priest in his stead and ruled the country and the cities therein, they wrote unto him in tables of brass to renew the friendship and league which they had made with Judas and Jonathan his brethren, which writings were read before the congregation at Jerusalem. And this is the copy of the letters that the Lacedaemonians sent, the rulers of the Lacedaemonians, with the city, unto Simon the high priest, and the elders, and priests, and residue of the people of the Jews, our brethren, send greeting. The ambassadors that were sent unto our people certified us of your glory and honor, wherefore we were glad of their coming and did register the things that they spake in the council of the people in this manner, Numinius son of Antiochus, and Antipater son of Jason, the Jews' ambassadors, came unto us to renew the friendship they had with us. And it pleased the people to entertain the men honorably, and to put the copy of their embassage in public records. To the end, the people of the Lacedaemonians might have a memorial thereof, Furthermore, we have written a copy thereof unto Simon the high priest. After this, Simon sent Numenius to Rome with a great shield of gold of a thousand pound weight to confirm the league with them. Whereof, when the people heard, they said, What thanks shall we give to Simon and his sons? For he and his brethren and the house of his father have established Israel, and chased away and fight their enemies from them, and confirmed their liberty. So then they wrote it in tables of brass, which they set upon pillars in Mount Sion. And this is the copy of the writing, the eighteenth day of the month Elul, in the hundred three score and twelfth year, being the third year of Simon, the high priest, at Saramel in the great congregation of the priests, and people, and rulers of the nation, and elders of the country, were these things notified unto us. Forasmuch as oftentimes there have been wars in the country, wherein for the maintenance of their sanctuary, and the law, Simon the son of Mattathias, of the posterity of Jarib, together with his brethren, put themselves in jeopardy, and resisting the enemies of their nation did their nation great honor. For after that, Jonathan, having gathered his nation together, and been their high priest, was added to his people. Their enemies prepared to invade their country, that they might destroy it, and lay hands on the sanctuary. At which time Simon rose up, and fought for his nation, and spent much of his own substance, and armed the valiant men of his nation, and gave them wages, and fortified the cities of Judea, together with Bethsura, that lieth upon the borders of Judea, where the armor of the enemies had been before. But he set a garrison of Jews there. Moreover, he fortified Joppa, which lieth upon the sea, and Gezera, that bordereth upon Azotus, where the enemies had dwelt before, but he placed Jews there, and furnished them with all things convenient for the reparation thereof. The people therefore sang the acts of Simon, and unto what glory he thought to bring his nation, made him their governor and chief priest, because he had done all these things, and for the justice and faith which he kept to his nation and for that he sought by all means to exalt his people. 
For in his time things prospered in his hands, so that the heathen were taken out of their country, and they also that were in the city of David in Jerusalem, who had made themselves a tower, out of which they issued, and polluted all about the sanctuary, and did much hurt in the holy place. But he placed Jews therein, and fortified it for the safety of the country and the city, and raised up the walls of Jerusalem. King Demetrius also confirmed him in the high priesthood according to those things, and made him one of his friends, and honored him with great honor. For he had heard say that the Romans had called the Jews their friends and confederates and brethren, and that they had entertained the ambassadors of Simon honorably. Also that the Jews and priests were well pleased that Simon should be their governor and high priest forever, until there should arise a faithful prophet. Moreover, that he should be their captain, and should take charge of the sanctuary, to set them over their works, and over the country, and over the armor, and over the fortresses. That, I say, he should take charge of the sanctuary. Beside this, that he should be obeyed of every man, and that all the writings in the country should be made in his name, and that he should be clothed in purple, and wear gold. Also, that it should be lawful for none of the people or priests to break any of these things, or to gainsay his words, or to gather an assembly in the country without him, or to be clothed in purple, or wear a buckle of gold. And whosoever should do otherwise, or break any of these things, he should be punished. Thus it liked all the people to deal with Simon, and to do as hath been said. Then Simon accepted hereof, and was well pleased to be high priest, and captain and governor of the Jews and priests, and to defend them all. So they commanded that this writing should be put in tables of brass, and that they should be set up within the compass of the sanctuary in a conspicuous place. Also, that the copies thereof should be laid up in the treasury, to the end that Simon and his sons might have them.